What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube, and today I've got another edition of The Drive-In, where I watch recently released films and tell you guys whether they're worth watching, worth waiting for, or worth skipping altogether. Today I am bringing you guys a review you maybe never expected if you've watched my channel before. I'm talking about A24's newest release, X. Now, if you guys are wondering why you have not seen previous A24 movies on my channel, I've got to come clean. I really, really normally do not like A24. I know that's a polarizing opinion. I know I'm going to lose some of you guys just on that first sentence alone, but it's true. <clears throat> A24, to me, kind of sometimes tries too hard. I feel like their stuff uh, can be really slow-paced, can be really tedious, can be really kind of uneventful, and can kind of try to kind of be too holier than thou in their stuff. They, they kind of try to be too art house, too artsy <clears throat> for me. And some of those movies in the past, like The Lighthouse, like Hereditary, like Midsommar, have just been sluggish for me. I have not enjoyed a lot of their previous films. But I saw two things um, on top of the trailer for X that I saw, their biggest new release. And I saw that Ty West was directing and writing. And I saw that Jenna Ortega was starring. Now, I love Jenna Ortega. We know her from You Season 2 and Scream, and Baby, uh, Scream 6, or 5, I'm sorry, Scream 5, Babysitter 2, we've seen her a lot recently, she is a national treasure, she's one of the new Scream queens that I really enjoy, and Ty West has a really unique art house way of doing things, uh, from movies like The Innkeepers and House of the Devil, where he is a slow burn kind of guy, but he does it in a tense and effective way, and he shoots things kind of old school, and that's kind of his style, portrayed itself very well in this trailer. I saw a lot of Ty West in the imagery. I saw a lot of throwbacks to classic slashers in this trailer. And so I was really um, open-minded and wanted to give this thing a chance. And I'm glad that I did. Um, X, 2022's newest release, runs about an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, it is written and directed by Ty West, like I said, starring Mia Goth, Jenna Ortega, Brittany Snow, and Kid Cudi. And, uh, it is essentially, again, I'm going to go spoiler free here, and then I'll do spoilers at the end of the of the review. It's a brand new film, just came out uh, on Friday. I'm posting this on Monday. Um, essentially, it is six six people, six uh, young filmmaker actors hit the road. They go in their camper and hit the road to go to a uh, random secluded location to shoot a porn film. Uh, they they want to go shoot porn, porn to get their start in the movies. Uh, the young actors are all trying to get their big break in Hollywood, but first they want to make it by making a really standout, independent porn film. So they go in and rent this property for a weekend off of an older couple that is up in a house uh, off the road. <clears throat> and it pretty much what ensues is what you expect to ensue. Um, the older couple kind of sees, and uh, the, there's an older lady. She kind of bonds with one of the uh, girls because the girl reminds her kind of of herself. And a lot of tension and gore and things like that ensue over the next hour and 45 minutes. I will say, <clears throat> the pacing in this movie is what you'd expect from an A24 film. It does start very slow, but not quite as slow as some of the others. And at least in the slower parts of the movie, say the first 45 minutes of the movie, first hour of the movie, uh, not a whole lot happens in terms of the horror aspects, but we do get some tension building we do get some character building, and we get some bonding of the characters. Now, there, there definitely are still some issues with the pacing, but I will cover those in a bit. The first thing I want to talk about is the very obvious Texas Chainsaw Massacre homage. This film is set in the 70s, and part of it is shot as such. They have the old 70s camera. They have a lot of older music uh, of things that came out in the 70s. They were time period accurate to this, which is a big positive, but it was clearly from a lot of things, a lot of the imagery, a lot of the style. It was a Texas Chainsaw Massacre slash Friday the 13th kind of slasher homage. This was what A24 would do if they were taking a classic slasher and putting their kind of art house slow burn twist on it. But it wasn't done in a way this time that would outclass the audience or lose its fans. Uh, this wasn't slow paced in such a way that would make you kind of get bored. Um, just from from the, uh, the, the old uh, six people in a camper driving down the road... Um, coming ac across a, a weirdo family, uh, having a, a cabin in the woods kind of thing. The house, actually, the, the house of the old couple looks like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. There are a lot of homages to that. Uh, we also get Don't Fear the Reaper in one of the uh, car scenes in this movie, which is the Halloween uh, TV commercial homage. Uh, we just, we get a lot of 
late 70s, early 80s slasher kind of references and feel in this movie. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's what you do with it that makes it good or bad. And I think A24 did a decent job here, and especially with Ty West's style, in kind of updating this and making it different while not making it try to seem too different, if that makes any sense. They're not force-feeding it. They're not going, look how different we are. Look how counterculture we are. They, they are making a slasher film, and they're putting a modernized twist on it which more, more often than not works in this film. They did a pretty good job with it. Uh, the messages in this film. This film has a lot of messages. We hear in the dialogue a lot of meta things, but they're not meta things like how Scream would make it kind of obvious. We hear meta things about like filmmaking and how it's important to try to make a, a piece of cinema and not just a regular film. And we hear things about how you should enjoy your youth and kind of love what you do and just like have a good time while you can because you can't always do it. And not judge others for wanting to do what they do. And not forcing your beliefs down somebody else's throat. They have a lot of these themes, um, both visually and just physically on screen, that you see throughout the film. And that is one of the biggest things with the protagonist meeting the antagonist in this film. Is you get the appreciation for youth. The appreciation for nostalgia. The appreciation for beauty and roaming free and doing what you want to do. This is a very sexually expressive film. And I don't think, I think the, there's a lot of nudity. You, you get some man butts, you get some girl boobs, all that fun slasher stuff. So that's another homage to the early slashers. But the characters, while being sometimes single-minded, are not, they're not dumb and they're, they're not kind of, they're not just thrown out there for gratuitous reasons. Uh, the nudity in this film has a place because they're shooting the porn film and the human body and sexuality and things like that are explored in the entire film and they have a lot of deeper meanings behind just the surface level, which I really like that. A lot of times in a slasher film, it's just, oh, this guy was picked on, so he comes back and kills everyone else. There's more to it, psychologically, especially with the antagonist, and I really enjoy that in this film. <clears throat> uh, the gore is really good, too. Obviously, in a classic slasher, on top of the sex and the violence and the reasoning, you want good gore, and uh, they, they took... They chose really good spots in this movie. There are times when they cut away from the gore, and there are times when they embrace and show the full gore. And when they decide to go with it, it is full on. It looks really good. There's no CGI here. They use a lot of practicality, and they do it very effectively. And the times they linger on it, it really lingers on it for a reason. When somebody's paying for something or somebody gets their comeuppance at the end of a scene, it feels like they deserve what they get or you're waiting to see how they're going to pay for, for the situation they're in. And this film does that pretty well. Um, some negatives that, that I want to kind of uh, nitpick here a little bit. And again, I, I like this film because it does meander at times, but it doesn't lose you. And it doesn't try to preach to you, but it does lay some messages in there. There's some layers to it, but it doesn't feel overly sophisticated or overly complicated or overly boring. Like some of the other A24 films, just in my opinion. But uh, some of the, the negative aspects here, I have character motivations. Um... <clears throat> some of the characters in this film, including some of the leading ladies, which are well acted. This is a well cast film. Obviously, you know several of the names that I read out. The ladies are really good in this film. The acting is solid, as you'd expect from these horror standouts. Uh, Mia Goth was, was good. Jenna Ortega, obviously, is a staple. Brittany Snow, it's good to see her back. Um, really no weak links in the acting department here, but the motivations of the characters kind of change at some certain points. There's one character in particular who doesn't want to take part in the sexual stuff. And then after one brief explanation, you know, ten, 10 minutes later, she wants to take, take part in the sexual activities. And her being kind of more chaste and more shy set her apart and made her different than the other characters. And then all of a sudden she goes, yeah, actually, I, I want to do this too. I, I want to do what you guys are doing. So it kind of makes you scratch your head on this a little bit. And then another character is really pro-sex and pro, yeah, we, we should all just do this and get along. It's all good and fun. And then when somebody he cares about wants to get involved in it, he goes, no, I don't think you should do this. I don't think it's right for you. So there's a lot of hypocriticalness and a lot of changing your stances and kind of giving in on um, your, your beliefs and your morals in this movie a little bit. And it kind of feels like those moments are rushed and they don't fully explain why those motivations change. So that kind of bothered me a little bit. Uh, something else is character depth. Uh, for a film that goes an hour and 45, and again, it's, 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 it's fairly well paced, but it does start slow. That first 45 minutes to an hour is just spending time with the characters in their, in their kind of sexual and young and lusty motivations. And that's fine. It's, it's, it's again, well acted. The dialogue is good. And Ty West's style is really nice in this. But 
some of those, you know, that, that first hour, we could spend more time getting to know these characters. Only one character really has a background that really ties into the story and really sees a bit of an evolution from one part to the next. The other characters don't really evolve or change, and we really don't get to know a lot of their backstories. And I understand you don't have to always flesh out everything, especially in a slasher, but for A24 and, and for a lot of stylized things in this movie, and they did a good job layering some things, they could have layered a few of the characters a little better as well. Letting us know why these characters want to be in this situation, why these characters are doing what they're doing, beyond just being young and sexually repressed or whatever, I would like to know a little more about them. The antagonists and some of the other characters feel a lot more layered and a lot more important than our protagonists, and I kind of wish they gave us a little bit more fodder for them, because the times that they do, it's really nice. I wish they had done more. If you're going to pace it slow like that and you're going to spend the first half of the movie establishing your characters, that's a good formula as long as you establish more about them. And this film didn't always do that at times for me. Uh, again, the antagonists were fascinating and the style of Ty West and the camera work was really nice. They used a lot of off angles, overhead shots, which were nice, long shots to establish the locations, which were great. Good locations, good shots. Uh, coloring was nice as well. We, def we definitely saw some good coloring. We saw a lot of the video cam POV shots that gave you that 70s grainy VHS tape feel, which was really nice. The props were accurate. I enjoyed all of that stuff. This thing had tension and a good soundtrack underneath that was period accurate, so it did a lot of things well. Like I said, I would have either shaved 20 minutes off of this or I would have spent that 20 minutes giving, giving the main characters a little bit more meat on the bone because at the times they did that, it was done well. <clears throat> all in all, um, and also stay to the end of this film, there is a post credits sequence that you'll want to see. But all in all, for an A24 film that I went into with kind of mixed expectations, I really enjoyed this. I think it's Ty West's best film, in my opinion, and I like some of his other stuff. I think it's A24's best film, in my opinion. I think, again, it's not perfect. It's not um, amazing or anything. It's not going to revolutionize the world, but I think it is probably the strongest film so far in 2022 for horror and I think that it does a nice job in not overstaying its welcome, giving you a nostalgic slasher and also putting a different spin and a bit of layers to it at times when they mixed in their style with the old style we're used to. So I really like that a lot. So if you want to see a fun slasher, it's well shot, well acted with good gore and a good time with a little bit of a nice message in there as well. I think you'll enjoy this. Again, there are some character issues. There are some pacing issues early on. But I think overall it's fun. I would give this film a 7 out of 10. And like I said, so far, of the like 4 or 5 horror standouts that I've seen so far, I'd say this is my number 1 to this point in the year through 3 months so far. So, what did you guys think? Uh, I'm going to skip the spoilers for now. It just came out. If you guys want to hear a spoiler review uh, of this film, I will give you guys one in the future. So tell me in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this review and other videos. I also just watched... Last night, night, night in Soho. So if you guys want to see me review that movie, that could be coming up this week as well. Along with M. Night Shyamalan's Oh, I'll be watching soon to review that as well. So if you guys like these kind of deep dive reviews into the movies, please tell me, like, share, and subscribe, and I will continue to bring these to you. And if you have seen this movie, X, what do you think of it? What did you like and not like? Please tell me in the comments. Let's talk, and I will see you guys soon.